Good evening. Welcome to the Shadow Trader Video Weekly for Sunday, April 29th, 2018. If you recall, the title of last week's video and topic was focusing on these inverted hammers, which was a bearish signal in all of the major averages. All the major averages had these big topping tails on their weekly bar. And these longer term weekly bars are usually good um, signals. They're pretty reliable signals for direction. So basically you play opposite the tail, right? So you had the tail up, so the, the next move was down. And what's very interesting about what happened this week is that worked for a little while, but notice what happened, what type of bar it left. It left a regular hammer on the chart. So now we have an inverted hammer and a regular hammer, and I call those opposing tails because the tails are basically opposing each other. So this is really a very, very tricky situation in the market because going forward, is it bullish? Is it bearish? You have a bearish signal from last week and you have a bullish signal from this week. It's really impossible to say. This is That's why the title of this video is, you know, opposing tails and, and other quagmire, because uh, that's pretty much what we have here. And in looking at these, this on the weekly chart, I think it makes a lot of sense to kind of ask ourselves, how did we get here? And take a look at some of the failures that happened this week, which were pretty amazing in terms of just kind of faking everybody out. So I've been focusing on this box pattern for a while in this, this consolidation area. It took the market a while to get out of it, as we know, right? And last week, the market broke out relatively feebly, but it did break out. And notice that when it came back, it didn't support exactly at the top of the box. It supported, you know, kind of just inside and the prices closed right at the top of the box. So that's fine. So up to this point right here, everything is working as planned, okay? Then you have a classic big body candle expansion of range into the box, right? So this is the look above and fail that I was talking about in last week's video where I was questioning saying, look, is the movement here back inside of the box, does that make all of this represent a look above and fail? And here, which was just four sessions ago on Tuesday, it confirmed that it was a look above and fail because we cracked down hard into balance. And if you recall, one of the things I was saying was that if we make it to about the midpoint, anywhere here, the odds are really strong we see the other side of balance. Now, regardless of whether you go into the midpoint or not, the theory is that when you look at a balance, it's called the balance rules. And the way balance rules work are very simple, is that if you break out of balance and you come back into balance, your target is always the other side of balance. Larger traders will set up big trades as markets fail to break out and come back in. And the reason they'll set up big trades that way with targets to the other side of balance is because they have really asymmetric risk reward. All right, think about it. If you have a small breakout and it fails and you come back in, you enter a short right here, you've got to stop here, but you've got a possible target of all the way here if the theory plays out and you go to the opposite end of balance. So here you can see a lot of traders got short. We closed relatively bearish. The next day, everything is fine. On this bar here, I think the tone is still very bearish because it made sense that we would take out the prior day's low and not hold it because there probably weren't enough sellers like right away. You, have, you know, As Dalton always says, sometimes the market has to rally before it can break. But then on Thursday, everything changes dramatically and you have a strong move to the upside that goes to within about 90% of the range of the breakdown bar. And then on Friday, goes even higher, just a tad bit higher right up into here. So basically what I'm saying is it makes absolutely no sense in that the market has, has basically set up areas where it should be going a certain direction, should follow through to here, should do this, and it's not. Now, why is this happening? A lot of uncertainty, I think, because of the earnings. I think that what was happening is that the market wants to go lower in the bigger sense, but the earnings were strong. You had some gap ups in the FANG stocks, and that was pushing things. Most notably, I think the, the surprise in Facebook seemed to push the market. Here were Facebook earnings here. Right on Thursday, pushed the market up, and it just kept going. And this is kind of the the uh, you know lasting after effects, so to speak. On Friday, we didn't really go anywhere, but uh, it kind of makes sense. All right. So that being said, where do we go now? I have absolutely no idea. All I can say is that if we go up, your target is here. SPX target would be about twenty-seven twenty. 
And if we go down, I'll tell you a specific area where we will go, which is back into this area. And I'll tell you why specifically, because if you look at your profile, you have two POCs that are almost identical at 2630. You have basically what we call a high volume node. This was the fairest price to do business on this day, and this was the fairest price to do business on that day. So you know that you have a lot of volume right in here. A lot of volume was traded right in here. And this was also one of the reasons why I felt that when I saw these two days at the close of this day, which is right here, I really felt like, hmm, this is still pretty bearish, right? Because you sold off here on poor structure, a lot of single prints, so there was a lot of panic selling, but where was value? Value was all down here. And the next day, when the market failed to take out the prior day's low and rallied a bit, where was value again? Value was again right here. Value didn't really move. Value on this day accepted this value down here. So I was okay with the fact that you had these single prints up here. But then, like I said, the next day happened, which is Thursday, boom, strong market to the upside and even closed up at the high right in here. All right, so that's the situation as far as the downside. Where is the market going? You're going to be looking for, for futures to be about 2631 as the futures are, and that's very, very close to cash basically, but you're going to be looking for approximately that uh, 2630 area. Okay, last but not least, a quick rundown of FANG. And the only reason I'm doing this is because it confirms everything that I've been saying. I firmly believe that if, if the market is doing what it should be doing, or I shouldn't say should be doing, but if a market is trending at least a little or trending in such a way that it is playable, doesn't have to be up, could be, could be down, but it is trending to a degree, you will see strong relative strength in the FANG stocks. For instance, the market is sideways to at least up. It's at least got a decent trajectory in one direction, you'll see playable setups in these stocks. Well, lo and behold, there's absolutely no playable setup almost in any of these stocks. If you look at, for instance, Facebook had the large gap on the earnings and then a really ugly bar the next day, sort of a dark cloud cover coming back into it. And again, if you look at ranges, it's relatively middling. So Facebook, I'm only really interested if it can break out back into the gap and then I think you might have a trade to there. Correct. Amazon was ugly on its report. Huge gap up, which was excellent. Up into the 1650s, new high, right? But then doesn't hold the new high. Comes back into range on a huge candle with huge increase in volume. So you tell me, more than likely, that feels like lower, right? More than likely, it feels like a lot of people very disappointed and there's definitely some distribution happening there. Apple could be interesting a bit lower, but why would you buy it here? when you've got this support here. Doesn't really make a lot of sense, I don't think, to be involved in this area, correct? Netflix, very, very middling. This is a range like this, and what's the exact middle of the range? Right about here. And where's the stock? Right in the middle of the range. And last but not least, Google, they're kind of weak. This could be in play, but I would say if it's gonna be in play, I would say wait for a lower support on the weekly, which is coming in right to here. So, and also, if you look at the trend line here on Google, Google's probably going to go a little bit lower. It's probably going to come into this trend line. Then if it breaks, it could hit that support point that I just discussed. Okay? So that's it for the video today. To recap, very, very important. We're in a very, very difficult market here. Opposing tails on the weeklies, causing a lot of havoc. Market, market is absolutely positively not showing its hand right now. Lots of fake outs where what should have happened didn't. If the market goes higher, I gave you the area where it's going to go. You're going to see approximately that 2720. If the market goes lower, you should be targeting that 2630. And FANG stocks, really no play right now. All right. On behalf of myself and the entire, entire Shadow Trader team here in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I sincerely wish you good trading and good night.